<laughs> Alright, what's up? Um, not sure exactly what's on. I'll give it a few minutes. <clears throat> Before I start reporting, uh, real quick, if you don't know where we're at, we still are on the blockade, the Tar Sands blockade here in Texas, eastern Texas. See, I'm standing on a walkway above ground. Some banners hanging off. If you go to the Tar Sands blockade uh, site, you can see what those banners say. I don't have a good enough angle to be able to let you see what they say. So I'll give it a few minutes, and then I'll probably be on for maybe 10, 15 minutes and go down. Just because uh, it can't really run straight, I want to make sure that we're saving the uh, battery power we have. We do have a lot of battery power, but we're also really uncertain as to how long we're going to be up here. Um, this little grasshopper guy up here. So it's, it's possible to get up here, as you can tell, as a grasshopper. Get all the way up. So again, I'm just going to give it a few minutes before I start going. Um, uh, next update will be at 6 p.m. I'll just say that right away. 6 p.m. sounds like a good time. Uh, but we're looking at probably 8 a.m. No, we'll go with 9 a.m. That's usually when the folks get here. 9 a.m., 1 p.m., 6 p.m., and then 10 p.m. will be our daily updates. And then again, of course, I'll go live if uh, anything happens or they come to try to evict the people in the tree stands and or on this walkway. Oh, look, there's a little, like... So we have friends up here. It's Mary G on the monopod there. Been up for over 30 hours now, I think. So I'll wait uh, two more minutes, and they'll start to ramble on. Anybody who's just joining, this is uh, under the camera here at the Tar Sands Blockade, reporting live, as live as I can get it. Again, I am in the middle of nowhere, so connection is pretty poor. Hopefully I will be able to upgrade equipment eventually to be able to not have that happen when I have a poor connection. But right now, again, sort of in the middle of the woods, sort of unable to come down, so just kind of doing what I can, how I can. So uh, give it about two more minutes, or a minute and 30 seconds, and I'll start to ramble. And if you have questions, you can go ahead and post them out of the chat line, I think is what's working specifically right now. Uh, Oh, up one. No, it's the same. I don't change anything too much. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm uh, streaming from a different point. Um, most of the time I spent on this little platform that overlooks where Mary G's at, who is on that monopod. Again, she's been up there for over 30 plus hours. And you can also see there's some workers on the ground right below her. Again, I don't know exactly how good the video is. I heard the audio is pretty good, so I'll make sure to narrate and give you a good idea of what things are like here. Um, Again, all right, so we'll just get started. So it's about 1 p.m. Uh, as far as I know, this is day 10 of the blockade, or at least, I'm not exactly sure, exactly sure how it's worded. I'm currently still sitting up here. I don't know if I'll be coming down till I can't be up here anymore. I'm not sure how that plays out. We'll find out as time progresses. Uh, you can probably hear there's a chainsaw crews. They're working along the edges of the blockade. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why, but it looks like they're clearing the way 
for vehicles to move from the south and north. And they've been doing this most of the day uh, today. Yesterday, or when they first pulled up earlier today, they had different machinery. And once upon scene, I guess yesterday, I'm just already losing. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, when they first saw the monopod, they had different machinery when they decided to pull that back. And now it looks like their focus has mostly been to clear the road to be able to pull in some sort of other machinery. That's what they've been doing most of the day. Uh, there, there was an earlier occurrence where somebody who I don't, I don't know in plain clothes was yelling up at us a uh, different sort of, um, you know, this information about, and they're looking for certain people who I don't, who are, I don't know, I guess I don't, I don't personally know if they're here or not. Like, I don't really know anybody up here. I uh, just kind of came up today, or yesterday, and uh, been up in the trees to cover this, and I don't know anyone at all. But everyone that I've been working with has been pretty much masked the whole time, protecting their identity again. Uh, there's been a lot of, um, you know, there's threats against the people up here for being up here and, you know, blockading work for Trans Canada. And so they're trying to protect their identity. Me personally, I can't do that since I'm streaming. So be very aware that I am in this in the bed. Oh, there's a guy walking around with a SWAT t-shirt down there. There's, yeah, it's a, the recent development too is that um, it looks like they have patrols now. They're patrolling around the woods to make sure nobody comes in or out that they don't want to allow in or out. And that's been going on now for, I think, since this morning, or since the, the change in the situation of the, the tripod. So, like, since that yesterday morning, I apologize. Oh, yesterday about 8 p.m. is when that started. Because up to that point, there have been some, a group of folks in the woods watching over the, uh, the sitter, and uh, the monopod, I apologize, not tripod, and were there to let the workers and sheriffs know that if they, they touch any of the supporting lines, they would be endangering her life. She does have to constantly remind. They're playing a the game right now. Um, they, they, the, the workers uh, seem to be new at times. Don't know about that. They do sit down on the trees that are supporting her, and she has to advise them that you know it's okay if they sit there, but if they don't, if they don't, uh, you know, if they move it too much, it could endanger her life. And she just wants them to know that. Usually, they seem to be very. Uh, Cognizant, they do kind of this like a uh, embarrassed sort of stay for a few seconds, then move. You know, I think most people know what, what I mean by that. And, and so, but they seem to be understanding that they shouldn't be messing with those trees, and they've left them pretty much alone. But they have taken photographs of how they've been set up. Um, again, this is the walkway, the physical blockade. One of, and there's also behind me, and you may see there's a, a stand there. Nobody's in that stand, but there could be. And then further on, you can see another one right around there where there's um, folks up in that and they're they're all over uh, this area there's a few tree sits where people are up in the trees who I, I don't even think I've met those folks yet so as you can tell there, there's people behind me I don't know how many but on this walkway there's three of three folks who uh, been here at least for me personally this is my second day now up in the tree uh, sands uh, covering this tar sands blockade so yeah, so again, if you don't know what the tar sands are, you should probably look that up. And we're going to be live for about six more minutes, so if you want to throw out questions, please do. If you are curious about why people are doing this, or you know why people would come here, please let, let me know. I, I personally came here because I saw the call for media support, and figured that I could help there. I did, and now I'm here. There was a call, I was thinking it was earthfirstwordpress.com where I, I saw this call. But yeah, Tar Sands Blockade is a, the place to go to kind of get most of the information. Um, as it sounds, I mean, my, my speculative, and I know how much we hate speculation, but, is that they're currently trying to clear the roadway in order to bring a uh, cherry picker to pull Mary down. And that's been their focus most of the time. And I assume that they're clearing the roadway too because it helps them with their work. And they're trying to meld the two so that doesn't this event doesn't disturb them that much. But uh, as far as I've heard, you can see this point here is where they've been working up to, and once they reach there, they have not been able to push past this point. And so that's been going on for days now. And we're now in, for me personally, my second day of watching the folks, you know, and... Uh, yeah, it's, it's been, we've been passing the time a lot, um, by a lot of singing. Uh, you'd be surprised how much singing would be going on from the trees. 
too, and we're trying, uh, or at least uh, Mary mostly is trying to get the workers to sing with her constantly, the sheriffs to sing with her. Uh, there's been a lot of really interesting interactions between the sheriffs and police department folks with Mary, and compared to like the trans Canada folks. And I, I don't know if it's because the, the sheriff folks are from here, or, or what the difference is, but they, they seem to be really interested in, in, in how, I don't even know, this is weird. They seem curious as to how she's able to stay up there so long and what brought her to do this. And the Trans Canada folks just seem like they want everyone to be gone. So that's, that's kind of like the different stances on the people, I would say. Again, the Trans Canada folks, I'm, like, I'm being watched right now. There was somebody taking photographs of me moments ago as well to see what I was doing, but obviously I'm just holding the cell phone and kind of talking to you all. Uh, uppity one, as far as I can tell, they they tried, from my understanding of what happened is they, they came and they met this blockade here in the front and then uh, just started to try to cut around it. And that's what this cut right here is to where you see Mary's monopod. And so it looks like they came here, uh, we're trying to figure out how to deal with, with the blockade and they decided to try to move around it. And then when they cleared this area, the folks decided to erect a monopod with a person there to make it so they couldn't travel around the blockade and now this, that, that's where we're at. So yeah, it looks like they were able to change directions a little bit but then met up with uh, sort of the inventive ingenuity of three activists, you know, who uh, instantly put up another barrier and if, again, if, if they decide to haphazardly move her, she will, she will definitely be like, severely injured. So I mean, it's on them to understand that human life is at stake, and so they shouldn't shouldn't really mess with her. And she's I, she's been up there for like alone on that little pillar. I'm sorry, I keep moving. I know it's kind of bad. That little pillar for over 24 hours. You know, she's been there for 24 hours at the least. I mean, I'm uh, maybe 30 now. And so it's been it's been pretty incredible to even witness just to be here and see somebody who's willing to put so much risk on themselves to try to save Maria. And to stop, you know, the, the the pipeline coming in from Canada. They're shipping tar sands oil here. Uh, as far as uppity one, what I think they'll do is I, I tried to explain that is right now I think they're really trying to clear a, a good solid roadway up to the blockade, and then from there they'll probably bring in like a, a cherry picker. I, mean, I was even imagining maybe a fire engine, some way to put people up on the trees or to pull people down from the trees. And so I figure eventually that's what they're gonna do. And right now they're just kind of prepping for that and trying to also get as much work as they can get done with this in a way. And that's why I think there's work being done to the south of us. But that work seems to be coming towards us. So there's, there's it looks like they're... Okay, I can see some. It looks, it looks like they're, yeah, so this looks like they're trying to clear a roadway to be able to access this area better, is what I think is going on. Again, that's pure speculation. I don't have any way to, to, uh, and verify that. Alright, so I'm gonna be up for another minute and a half and then I'm gonna go down. Again, I'm just trying to give maybe like little 15 minute updates about what's happened. Basically what happened today, like I said, was just a lot of more police officers uh, in the woods patrolling around. Um, we were told, I couldn't even hear what we were told. Basically somebody was, was yelling up like, I don't, I don't want to call them threats. They're yelling up at uh, the people in the trees that, you know, what they were doing wasn't right. When I first got here, what was interesting was the police were explaining there's a right way to protest, this wasn't it. And so it's kind of like standard. Again, you know, hey, Hong Kong, I can't, sounds low, okay. I, I, I have very limited uh, computer access right now. I, I, I'm in, I'm, so if you can access this account, please take anything. Also, there's a third party program which allow, allows you to download people's Ustream footage. And so if you can grab that and just upload it, you can do it that way too. So I, I just personally can't do much else besides stream every day and tweet a little bit. But I'm trying again to just, you know, I have no idea. We have a lot of battery with us, but we also realize that we have no idea how long we're going to be up here. So we're going to do our best to conserve all the battery we have to be able to be live when we need to be live and also give updates daily on the current situation.
Yeah, the folks here are pretty inspiring to see them take so much risk upon themselves to just try to hold this piece of land. They, they, a lot of the conversation, at least on the, on the wall, has been about how beautiful this area was before the, the construction got here and how it was like this pristine forest that's slowly being destroyed around them. All right, so my next update will be at 6 p.m. I think I said 6 p.m. At 6 p.m.? That's usually when it looks like the workers are winding down and get ready to go. Last night was a little different. They did bring in spotlights and work till maybe 9 p.m. But as it stands now, yeah, my next update will be at 6 p.m. I will let you know what occurred in the, my downtime. But right now, like I said, mostly it's just workers working around the, the blockade, trying to do what they can, but it's obvious that they're a little limited in what they were planning to do. So right now, it looks like, they, like I said, they're clearing a roadway, trying to get more machinery towards where we are. There are a few chainsaw crews working, but not very many. And it, so it's hard to really tell what will happen next. But as far as I can tell, it, you know, their work has been slowed down drastically. They have not been able to push past the blockade. They try to go around it, and that has been blocked. And now it's sort of just waiting to see what happens next. Um, up here in the tr and where I'm at, there's plenty of water and food to be here for quite a while. And it's not, you know, convenient, but it's worth being here to be able to make sure nothing goes hidden. That's kind of what I learned at, from a good compadre. Uh, Hong Kong, I don't. If you talk to Nanya Man, uh, Nanya Man knows what that program is. Also talk to Sabin about accident. Uh, this uh, footage or talk to Van Prag. All of those folks might be able to help you. Uh, yeah, well, there is a little bit of solar gear. Uh, there's a lot of stuff we do need up here, but honestly, nobody can come here right now. Like, uh, there's nobody to get stuff to us. This place is surrounded. There's no way to get down and not be at risk of not being able to, If I go down, I'll be at risk of not being able to cover this anymore. So basically, as it stands, it looks like what we have is what we have, and we'll work from there. If anybody, if anybody, yeah, it's it's the connection up here is horrendous. Oh, again, I, if you do want to email me, I actually I don't know how it'll work out. Was I'm pretty sure once I come down, it'll be because this won't be here anymore. So we can try to figure out uh, solutions because I'm obviously willing to embed myself in any action to make sure it's covered as fully as possible. So maybe uh, we can figure out how to make sure next time I have a much better signal. But as it stands, I'm being video I'm showing my press pass. Hoping you understand. But it doesn't really matter. Like, I don't really think they matter. I'm pretty sure they're just figuring out how to like mess with me more. But anyways, you all take care. This is the unedited camera here at the Tar Sands Blockade in eastern Texas, uh, which is physically stopping a pipeline from going in from the Trans Canada Pipeline in Alberta Tar Sands, where they're pulling out oil in a very environmentally destructive way, as I've been told. And so these folks have organized to stop that pipeline, or at least make it inconvenient to put in and so far they have been very successful uh, the the campaign will be going on will be ongoing so please take a look at uh, tar sands blockade uh, the wordpress i don't know the exact uh, tar sands blockade org maybe i don't remember the exact address but all right thank you all very much i'll be live again in a few hours and you all take care